forensic pathology, he said, well, I talked to a pathologist at the crime scene. Therefore, I know more than the normal um, uh, person on the, on the jury. <laughs> wow. And he got all that wrong, too. So <clears throat> that, that, that slanting of the truth, um, and it was at the time what I saw, that was a rogue unit. They were people. They were not scientists. They were brought in as fixers. That was how I felt about them. They, if you weren't getting the right answer out of the labs, and these guys that don't know what they're talking about, but we'll do what the bosses want them to. And the the uh, the blame, the responsibility for what happened at the FBI crime lab, went all the way to the management. It went to the management, allowing blatant open, uh, vulgar, inappropriate actions to continue unabated. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen the news lately, but for the FBI admitted that 26 of 28 examiners doing hair analyses testified inappropriately for 30 years and 95% of their testimonies. Wow, that's 26 of 28 guys, and they weren't all there at the same time. <clears throat> and now they're having to try and figure out how to fix that. But they had, you know, lead analysis that um, they they had no scientific basis for the lead analysis. And yet they were out there testifying to some horrendous stuff that was that was uh, outlandish. And so do you think it's worse today or has it gotten better? Oh, that laboratory is light years ahead where it was before. Yeah. Yes, I'm so proud of where they are. You know, we're going to find fault with them. We're going to find fault with any human enterprise. But at this point, they're they're bent over backwards to validate their protocols. They, that means you have a method that you use to determine the, the answer to a question. You have to know if the method works. And they're bending over backwards to do that. I don't think they've quite got there, but, you know, I'm not the wall. I'm just a brick in the wall. But um, the thing that they're lacking right now is that they should be putting their protocols on the Internet. What they're doing is not new science. It's not secret science. It's not, uh, it wouldn't be any national security issues about, it, you know. Just here it is. Here's what you've done. This is what you, you, you know. Um, the state I'm in, North Carolina, should be used as a national model as far as I'm concerned. You can go to their Department of Justice website, bring up all the protocols we're using in that lab. We can interact with a lab and say we think there are issues here. If they, if they agree or we can have scientific discussions, it's, um, it's the way it ought to be. <clears throat> Put it out there. This is science. You know, it's sort of... You, you might look at the FBI like, oh, my goodness, we're using a gun, but we don't anybody know, know how we use it. Okay. Why not? You know, it's a weapon. It's a, you know, well, the, the things that they're doing, the tools they're using in the lab should be understood. If, you, if you're going to find an answer, we should be allowed to look at what you're doing because it, it's not them. They're not the the nation. We are the nation, and we should be allowed to determine whether we're being defended or not, whether we are being protected or not. But that is a weakness they've got. But I think that ultimately they're going to realize they're not doing a bad job. Put it out there. Let the world see what you're doing. And it's not going to make any difference on, in, you know, for, for terrorism or bank robbers or something like that. I mean, you can't even, you can't even get um, FBI managers to understand what's going on in their lab much less terrorist. Or, or defense so, attorney, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we better take a so commercial it, Yeah, go ahead. Is it better? Yes, it is better. Okay, we better take a commercial break. Uh, we're here with Dr. Fred Whitehurst, uh, former FBI. He's a whistleblower, worked on some of the biggest cases uh, out there, uh, Oklahoma City bombing, TWA 800, O.J. Simpson case, Waco, and uh, became a whistleblower, sued the FBI, and collected, I believe it was a million and a half. Million and a quarter. Million and a quarter. A little quarter here, a quarter there. It all works out. Okay, we'll be back right after this message with more of Dr. Fred Whitehurst.
And now a word from our sponsors. Pacific West Bamboo, your premier source for sustainable building material. They provide construction grade and craft grade bamboo material for all your indoor, outdoor, and gardening needs. Uh, contact them for event planning and display building as well. 503-839-8126. Or you go to their new website, PacificWestBamboo.com. Or you can contact them on Facebook at Pacific West Bamboo. That's 503 503- 839-8126. Amanda from Pacific West Bamboo was our first sponsor. Uh, she's been so good to us. Uh, so please support her in return. I want to make everybody aware of our new member section at www.oppermanreport.com. Uh, you can go there and sign up for a monthly, quarterly, or yearly subscription. You can even purchase episodes one by one. Uh, you get full access to brand new original content, new guests, new uncensored interviews, my own investigations and reports, and we're going to be adding uh, sections with documents, images, police reports, uh, either provided by myself or by my guests or for my own investigations, my own reports. Uh, so you can go to oppermanreport.com and you can sign up there tonight. You can start listening tonight. Strawman. I want to mention Strawman. Strawman is a band uh, out of Toronto, Canada. Uh, they're good friends at the Opperman Report. Uh, they're a trio of guys who share the same mindset uh, most of us here do, and they put that energy into their words and music. Uh, so check them out at uh, strawmanmusic.com and drop them a line uh, to let them know that you heard them here on the Opperman Report. Uh, we'll be doing a, an interview with Sean Duffy soon. You can get an autographed copy of my book, How to Succeed as a Private Investigator, by visiting my PI website, emailrevealer.com. We also offer a computer and cell phone forensics. We can recover deleted text messages to uncover infidelity. Uh, we, can, uh, we offer asset searches, locates, email tracing, background reports, and we can even trace your spouse's email address back to internet dating websites to catch them cheating online. You can reach us at 800-572-9762, or you can email me at emailrevealer at AOL.com. New World Mexican Women. Everyone loves the New World Mexican Women. And their, their line of fine, handcrafted, authentic ju Mexican jewelry of stone mosaic and abalene stone inlay. In their first book, titled New World Mexican Women, available on lulu.com, uh, they teach you how to make this jewelry. And they have a collection of love letters to their men from their hometown that have immigrated to the United States to find work. Uh, they have also published a new book entitled Azukina to the Rodeo. It's about a young girl that falls in love with a rodeo bull rider, and she runs away with him uh, without telling her family. You can find the New World Mexican Women by Googling New World Mexican Women, and you can ask them about uh, their deals on wholesaling, their fine jewelry, and all of the other projects that they have going on. Uh, if you'd like to have your business or website advertised here and promoted all over the world on dozens of stations every day, give us a call at 800-572-9762 or email oppermanreport at gmail.com. And now back to our show. Welcome back to the Opperman Report. I am your host, private investigator, Ed Opperman. Uh, before we get back to our guest, Dr. Fred Whitehurst, the FBI whistleblower, uh, who uh, has been involved in everything from OKC uh, to TWA 800, the OJ trial, and Waco, uh, I want to remind you guys about the good folks over at michiganmushrooms.net. Now, have you heard of these chaga mushrooms? Uh, it's a mushroom that grows up way in the northern forests that Native Americans and Russians have been using for hundreds of years. Now, it's not the kind of mushroom that you eat, but you make a tea with it, and it's loaded with uh, polysaccharides and uh, unique phytochemicals, and it's actually pretty delicious, too, is what they tell me. Now, you wouldn't guess you were drinking mushroom tea. The folks over at michiganmushrooms.net have been harvesting chaga for years, and they've built a great reputation for having the best quality mushrooms for the best prices. Uh, don't forget, these mushrooms, they make a great Christmas gift because it's not the kind of mushrooms you'd buy in a store. You can, they, they're really hard. It's hard as a rock, this chaga stuff. They send it over to you like in a big chunk and you make a tea out of it. So it's a really unique kind of gift. 
uh, that you can give at Christmas time. Uh, so check out their Facebook page at Michigan Mushrooms LLC or michiganmushrooms.net if you want to place an order tonight. Uh, but tonight we have with us Dr. Fred Whitehurst. Uh, Dr. Whitehurst, have you ever tried uh, chaga mushroom tea? Nope, I'm afraid I haven't. <laughs> right, let's see if I can get some over there for you, okay? Let's see, let's see what I can do. I know the guys that own the place. <laughs> okay, we'll see if you guys are stuff. <laughs> now, uh, tell us about some of these. What did you have to do with the OJ case? Well, that was a mess. <clears throat> I was right in the middle of writing. I wrote 237 letters to the U.S. Department of Justice Inspector General over a five-year period of time. And um, <clears throat> right in the middle of that, I was down at Quantico at the research facility, and um, I was working on uh, forensic pain analysis. And I went out to stand while the instrument was working, and three guys came up to me, and they were, um, you know, mid, mid-level mid scientific managers and agents. and. They were commenting that uh, a fellow testifying in the case, um, if they what he had said wasn't perjury, there was no nothing like you know it was an FBI employee. And so I said, well, you know, you guys got to report perjury. And they say, no, no, we're not doing that. That'll ruin our career. So no, you, you're supposed to. You don't have any choice. The director and the uh, president have told us we have to report. Well, we're not going to report. So, oh boy, <clears throat> I uh, okay. Well, I went back. I wrote it up, and. Um, then, <clears throat> you know, here it is. These guys down there, I didn't see it. This is what they said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, next thing I know, I'm I'm in my attorney's office talking to him because I had to hire attorneys, a law firm, to protect me from the FBI and <clears throat> whatever. And um, and he picks up the phone and he says. Um, um, He's talking to some guy. He turns to me, puts his hand over, and he says, do you know who Barry Sheck is? And I went crazy. Of course, Barry Sheck was the Barry Sheck. Well, my attorney didn't know him. <laughs> so he was telling the attorney we're supposed to show up at um, the O.J. Simpson trial bag and baggage in all the documents that we were supposed to take with us that we had that could – and I, I, I had nothing to do with it. I didn't want to – I was already – you know, the devastating my family with, and with, you know, with the revelations you're coming up with. But uh, I and three, four attorneys and three legal assistants went to the airport in the Baltimore, Washington, whatever it is, BWI airport. Got on the airplane and flew out to um, flew out to the O.J. Simpson trial, and I went into a room with a whole bunch of people, and sat down at a table and they explained to them, okay, this is what I heard, this is what I know, this is what's wrong with that guy there, that that um, uh, this is why people think he did what he did, and, you know, he's, he's whatever. And uh, so <laughs> they housed me in the, the Bellage Hotel. Oh, yeah, I've stayed there, yeah, very nice hotel. Oh, my goodness. Well, but I couldn't, the, Johnny Cochran had called me his mystery witness. And so I, I couldn't I couldn't leave my room uh, because people just came up to me and I was I was sitting in a room with my attorney and I see this this very lovely I think it's a reporter or whatever on television saying I just came from an a exclusive interview with Frederick Whiters the whistleblower and he my attorney and I looked at each other and we, we've been sitting here for the last few hours what is she talking about. But um, I just held up there for, I guess, six, seven, eight days. And um, I finally went over to, <clears throat> uh, to the trial. And on the way over there, it was, it was wild because there were people completely all over the street. And it was just, you know, the whole place was just a mob. And there were people that were breaking away so I could go on through with my attorneys. And... Um, <laughs> I got in, and then finally in the courthouse, and I was sitting outside, and uh, uh, I, I remember because I, you know, I'm a guy that drives a pickup truck with crank up windows, in it, and I'm not a microphone guy. I'm just, you know, I'm I live in a town of 1,600 people right now, mm-hmm. and um, I'm sitting there, and there's nobody else outside the courtroom, and I'm by myself, and. The door opens, and Johnny Cochran comes through the door, and he says, Hey, Fred, how you doing? I said, Well, Johnny, I'm okay. And then he hit me like a load of bricks. 
I just called Johnny Cochran by his first name. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> but Judge Ito wouldn't let me testify, and thank goodness.